Hey, how you guys doing? So how'd you like my cheesy ch clock intro? With my soundtrack, by the way. Uh, yeah, on uh, I created that, uh, that music on uh, iPad. Yeah. All right, so how many people we got on here? Uh, 67. Quiet for a Friday, I suppose. How is everybody doing? Everybody okay? Yeah, I guess I'm a minute late. You'll probably wear PJs. No, polka dot shirt, polka dots. Oh, uh, fix my collar here. All right, there we go. Hmm. It's my John Lennon collection shirt here. All right, we're good. All right, guys, everything's good. Hello from Kuwait. Wow, Kuwait, that's cool. So we got people from Kuwait. Tight. That shirt looks good on you, boss. Thank you. I appreciate that, Tony. The clock music. Uh, the clock and music, cool. Not my clock, but the music is mine. All right. So we're good, we're good, we're good. In the soundtrack, live, 10 p.m. India. Oh, there we go. Smash that like button. Indeed, indeed. Live, 10 p.m. All right, all right. Hello, Instagram mischief. <laughs> uh, domain knowledge is, is money. Indeed it is, indeed it is. All right. I'm doing great. I hope you guys are doing good. So let me just jump into the subject at hand, and then we'll just do the, um, the Q&A. So I just wanted to talk about... Um, soft skills just a brief overview i think i should put out a mini course on that at some point after i move i'll be putting out a bunch of little mini courses uh did you record the drums for that too sounds awesome i actually just formulated the drums if you will in um in uh garage band i could have played the drums here but i was just you know you can just put together your beats in garage not garage band yeah garage band and everything else, all done on the iPad. I was just playing around one night, and uh, that came out. I have a bunch of other, well, a few, I got a few other tracks as well that I might start implementing or integrating, rather, within these live podcasts. All right, so let's talk about soft skills, something that you hear once in a while. And I'm not going to go into great detail here. I just want to talk about something that came up recently, so I thought it made sense to just go over briefly. Just in case you, know, just in case you don't know, Soft skills is just basically uh, interpersonal skills, communication skills. Now, as developers, you might be yawning now or you might be getting bored. How does this have to do with coding? It has a lot to do with coding because being able to communicate very well is going to have a huge impact in terms of your career, where you end up, whether you work for somebody or you're a freelancer. And just basically, it's going to have a huge impact in terms of um, how well you work with others and how well you work with your clients. So let me give you a couple of scenarios. Let's say you're freelancing and you're looking to get a new client. Being able to communicate with them, to speak to them in non-nerd, meaning without jargon or minimal jargon, minimal tech talk, is going to have... Uh, it's going to make a difference as to whether or not you're going to get the contract. So you have to learn to be able to speak uh, in a way that the business uh, owners, the small business owners, or your clients who may have no tech skills at all, you have to do it in such a way that they understand. One of the reasons I was successful in my freelance career is that I could speak to the non-programmers. In fact, I, that's how I ended up doing the teaching, by the way, because I would go in, in some freelance gig and I would uh, do my project, I do the, the project analysis, and I would present to the client what it is what we're going to build, and give them the reasons why. And I'd always get, wow, you've broken it. I've never seen software broken down so easily. And that gave them confidence in me as a developer, and, and it resulted in me getting the contract a lot of time a lot of the time. So if you have good communication, soft skills, uh, you're going to go a long way. So soft skills has to do with verbal communication, being able to speak in a way that they understand, being able to listen, listen intently to what your clients or what your coworkers may be telling you, um, being able to write in a clear, simple way as well. These are all part of it. It even comes down to body language. And of course, Maybe the most important, it's very important that you don't smell as a software developer. If you walk in there and you stink, it's not going to go over well. That's the ultimate soft skill. Hmm. Apparently, it helps with your dating life as well. So uh, there is the, there's been books written on soft skills. 
And if you're an experienced developer and uh, you're looking a way to uh, augment your, 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 you know, improve your standing within a company or get more clients, work on soft skills, work on presentation skills, um, because once you have your basics, you can pivot into any technology that you want with uh, relative ease. So there you go. That's just my quick little thing on soft skills. And it's Friday, I figure. Spend more time uh, answering questions today, and we'll just see where the conversation leads us. So um, let's see. Is this your new place or just a different angle? This is just a different angle. Uh, the new place, I'll be in there at the end of the month. So uh, the new place is totally different, actually, from this place. Uh, yeah, so uh, I wish I took interpersonal communications in college. Unfortunately, I was filled up and I had to settle for public speaking. Oh, I got a C laugh out loud. That's okay. You can just keep practicing, keep practicing. Uh, oftentimes, you know, I've been in business for a, a long, long time, and I can tell you every CEO, every senior VP I met, the one thing that was consistent about them was that they're very good with the soft skills. They had very good communication skills. So something worth investing in. Um, that is for sure. That is for sure. All right, let's see what we got here. I'll answer a tech question. Hey, Steph, what is the future of JavaScript and its frameworks, libraries, ecosystem? What's your thought on it? Um, it's going to calm down right now. JavaScript is, uh, although it's started to calm down, it's kind of crazy. You got 10,000 JavaScript frameworks, and everybody's jumping around, running around, trying to figure out what to do. I think you're, you're going to have a few winners. Like example for the server side JavaScript uh, web stack stuff, Express, I think is the dominant player by far. Uh, unless something much better comes out, uh, I think you're going to see Express continue to hold that lead. So that kind of settles in. You see that in any technology, you know, web, you know JavaScript, uh, Java, PHP. Like PHP, at one point we had a, a bunch of uh, PHP frameworks, but really. Most of the work, if not all, but most of the work is done with uh, Laravel. Hold on a second. We'll just check the lighting here. There we go. Sorry about that. It was getting a little overexposed with, um, I didn't do much. All right, I'm using sunlight outside. So as the sun moves in and out of the clouds, uh, the, the picture uh, gets blown out. Anyway. Uh, explain it if, as if I'm five, but with complete respect. Dracula says I have a great taste. And there you go. Uh, what is the best hosting company out there? There's a lot of good ones, I think. Um, it depends also on the type of hosting that you need. Some hosting is very, very sophisticated, like AWS, Amazon Web Services. Uh, some are very sophisticated, not as sophisticated, but pretty so sophisticated, like DigitalOcean, which I use as them. And then you have uh, more standard hosting, which 99% of websites uh, will be more than happy with or more than fine with. So it depends on what you're doing. What I suggest to do, first thing you do when checking to see if a web hosting company is good, see if you have any anybody you know personally who uses that company, and also call up the tech support or contact the tech support of the hosting company you're thinking of using and see if they answer their tech support calls. That's a good indicator of things. Uh, do you know something about the Italian developing scene? No, I do not. Sorry, guy. Sorry, guy. But I think development overall is just very good. Just look to see in Italy what the... Um, the more popular frameworks are. Like I know, for example, I believe in Germany, I hear .NET is very popular, as an example. Uh, Coder 101 says, uh, are you fed up with the amount of JavaScript frameworks? I personally find it very annoying when jobs averts looking for junior devs require React, Vue, Ang and Angular, etc. Yeah, that's nothing normal. That's nothing unusual, rather. It's quite normal that you see in a lot of job uh, advertisements. They'll ask for every framework under the sun, you know. It's, uh, it's what, that's HR departments. That's what they do. Stefan, where is the best place to find your freelancing clients? Should you cold call your local small business? Oh, boy. 
I, in my freelance course, I cover that kind of stuff. What I can say here on a live broadcast is that I would just uh, go to Google Maps, find some local businesses, and check out their websites. And if the websites look dated or old, or if they don't have a website, you try cold calling them. One thing you can do, especially when you're first starting out, just establish some reputation. If you offer to do some simple jobs for free, uh, just to build up your, yeah, you're right, it is, just to build up um, your reputation and get some work. Let me see, I'm going to fix my camera exposure here. Hold on a second. Sorry, very professional production here. Still bad. Hold on. Almost done. Okay, sorry about that. I think I've improved it quite a bit. All right, there we go. Let's see what Blake has to say. Steph, I love your no nonsense wisdom on these topics, just expressing gratitude for your content, no questions. All right, well, thanks for letting me know, and I'm happy I can help. I had mentors who helped me out quite a bit in my early career, and so I'm just returning the favor, I suppose. Hey, how, hey, how are ya? So your hand said in older video that you recommend offering yourself to small companies or to gain more experience. What if you're into other types of development and not web. Yeah, web is the most common for small business by far. Uh, maybe with mobile, you might be able to approach some small businesses, uh, mobile development, whether it be native or cross-platform. Um, maybe if you're, I don't know, I don't know what type of programming you're thinking of. Uh, certain types of programming are regulated, to, not regulated, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for? they're bound to larger businesses. So that becomes more difficult. Large companies will have HR departments, and so you're going to have to contend with that issue. Um, yeah. Let's see what we got here. Sam, I feel very comfortable with Flutter and Dart. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, let us know. Um, you got any jobs there? Did you find any jobs with Flutter and Dart yet? Would you recommend adding a stack to my mobile tool belt like Mern or Lamp or continue to develop my Flutter experience with animations. Um, I would uh, look around and see what the job opportunities are and let the let the money lead you in the right direction. Um, uh, Mern or Lamp. Hmm. Yeah, again, I would... Uh, uh, Mern is JavaScript, Lamp is uh, PHP. Um, I would uh, recommend you... Check around, see where where the opportunities are in terms of jobs or or or, uh, or jobs or freelance projects. What are your main job? What are your main job? I own a couple of uh, businesses and I deal with a lot of schools. Uh, I have I also deal with general public as well. I got my hands in different things. Um, when you get to be my age, that happens often. It's nothing special. I'm more into low-level dev. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, you might find some smaller companies. I don't. I don't know how much freelance you're going to get doing that kind of stuff. But um, reach out. Just reach out to companies. Just that's my suggestion to you. I'm having a hard time getting interviews as an entry-level dev. Any tips to get past the noise and start getting interviews? It's it's, it is just bad timing to be applying. Well, right now, it's not the best time, obviously. Again, put up a really good website. Looks good. Profile your skills. Do a couple of freebie jobs uh, for small businesses so you have some uh, portfolio, some track record to show. That will really help a lot in terms of getting uh, interviews and work on your... Make sure you present well. Make sure you're simplified in terms of uh, your, your CV is structured around the company you want to get a job at. So if the jobs are doing a lot of Java web, don't put, you have Python PHP skills at the top of your resume. Rearrange your resume according to the needs of the place you want to go work at. Um, what is your CPM on YouTube? Speaking about developing, uh, you know, I haven't checked in a while, but it's like a 10 to 10 to 15 range, something like that. Uh, let's see what we got here. 
The local scene here is dead. Should I try to sell my websites on Upwork, i.e. contact anyone who needs a website, modify my pre-made websites? P.S. I need money urgently. Yeah, well, if you need money urgently and you can't find a local, then you might want to try that out. Again, it's, um, you want to, you, a big part of anything in any career is building up reputation. Reputation is huge, guys. You got to really build that up. So whether you do it through uh, sites like Upwork or you do it through local contacts and so on. But to make sure you have a really good uh, website so that people can come and check you out and say, hey, this guy, you know, he designs good looking stuff. Because a lot of people are going to judge you based on the look of your website more than anything else. Um, besides the skill set. I understand that soft skills is important. Can you give us some tips on improving soft skills before you even get a developer job? Do you just practice talking by yourself? I would just start talking to people. Yeah, at the grocery stores, at coffee shops, uh, uh, just get comfortable just talking to people you don't know. That's the first step, I think. Talking yourself, if you're going to do that, just don't do it while walking down the street. Uh, I know jazz, but nothing about framework. I find it pretty hard to find any job on Upwork, any advice. Yeah, well, it seems like you, you may have a very limited skill being just a, I don't know what your other skills are, but being just a JavaScript programmer, very limited. Uh, if you're going to do JavaScript professionally, you're probably going to need some sort of uh, framework. I think the most popular now is uh, React, uh, although you should check, see what, where the jobs are at. Full stack is always easier to find work, that's for sure. Uh, what else we got? Uh, here we go. Hello, sir. Greetings to you. My question is, could you recommend some good books to start studying fundamental programming for any coders? Uh, books I couldn't say. Just check up, rev check out reviews on Amazon. Um, if you want to learn the basics of coding, uh, I don't know. Do you know HTML, or JavaScript? If you don't, then you should take. Uh, yeah, where is it? I'm gonna shamelessly self promote my own book. Link below. If you if you want to learn HTML, CSS, um, and the basics of the web and so on, and you know. There's, all, there's also my online system. You want to check that out as well, Studio Web. Uh, where we else? What else? What else? All right. Well, we're catching up to all the questions. So, how are we doing? 25 minutes already. Woof. Time flies. See what we got here. Mm. So, I've actually caught up to all the questions. This, I think this is the first. So what we got here? Uh, Isaac, hey man, do you have any tips for staying focused when sitting longer periods? Take little breaks every now and then. You know, don't sit there for three hours. Take breaks every half an hour. Or walk around for 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Not maybe okay. Every hour, walk around for 10, 15 minutes. Take little breaks. Break up the monotony. Um, step away from the computer. Step away from the desk. I think that's the best way to handle that. Danielle Fritas, I think I pronounced that properly. Hey, Stefan, to enhance the odds to move to another country as a web developer, it's a better idea to focus on programming languages for larger for large organizations like Java and C Sharp, or does that matter much? Um, depends where your jobs are. I think you got more chance of being moved from country A to country B if you go work for a large organization. So that being said, for large organizations, especially, especially if you're moving abroad, there might be a requirement, more likely to be a requirement that you have some, some sort of higher degree. I know that in Canada, that's one of the things they look for when they're looking at uh, new immigrants. They're looking at people who have college education. There's like a scoring system. And if you have a high education, then they're much more likely to, they're going to let you in. Um, and then what you do is you look at Let's say you wanted to come to Montreal, Canada, as an example. You would look at the job listings. Go to Indeed.com, for example. And look at the job listings for Montreal, Canada, and try to find larger companies. And then do searching on Google. See in Montreal what companies in Montreal are in bringing in talent from overseas and see what uh, languages they're interested in and find out. Uh, you can give them a call or send them an email what what uh, requirements that they have, you know? So you may need to have a degree in that context, right? <laughs> uh, 
I'm now doing 90 minutes work, 20 minutes break. Works amazing. There you go. DD has an answer for you. Tips on how not to smell. <laughs> uh, yeah, tips on how not to smell. Uh, tell us, Colleen, how do you not smell? How to get a job without... Uh, how to get a job without computer science degree. You do that by... Um, uh, by building up your portfolio, by doing small jobs or small businesses. That's how you do that. Uh, what are the best projects to have under belt that would speed up the work for client? Which type of cred website, which authentication? You do the base, you do your foundations, you do one or two little cred projects so you, you understand that whole interaction. And then I would look around, see what the job opportunities are like, and then I would choose a framework, a web framework, uh, that would uh, match whatever opportunities are out there. So let's say you you do you do what I say, and then you look out there and you see there's a lot of uh, PHP Laravel jobs. Learn Laravel, or you see that there maybe there's a lot of Express JS and Node jobs. Then learn Express JS and Node. Again, let the market help you uh, target what your learnings are going to be. One of my uh, expressions is learn. On a need to nerd basis, need to nerd basis. No developer knows everything, and uh, the job of, of the developer, part of the job anyway, is actually to be able to learn new technologies on the fly. It's not that difficult once you've uh, done your basics and you've done a few things, you'll get the confidence. Uh, DD. Also, when I'm working, I close all tabs and distractions and turn off the phone. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Attila says, Hi, Stefan. I am a pro developer with 20 plus years experience, mainly Angular with .NET Core backend. For the next few, for the next new medium sized job, would you choose a new technology view or Blazor for education purposes? Hmm. Well, you got a lot of experience. I would I would let the market again. I would look around, see what where the demand is. Is it view? Is it Blazor? And then I would just uh, go in that direction. That's my suggestion. Uh, with the assumption that you're you're basically looking to uh, improve your skill set to make yourself more marketable, to give you more opportunity, or maybe to raise your salary. I have any advices or books to write maintainable code. Oh yeah, this is the king. This is for Java, but it applies to any language. Link is below. In There will be a link below. This is the book that I would recommend. There's a second edition, I think. I, I have a link to the first, but you can get to the second. This is the book. It's I learned a lot from this book uh, 100 years ago. So, All right, what else we got? Can I find freelance work with JavaScript, WebGL, I am not into games. I don't know. That's that's kind of a highly specialized um, skill set within the JavaScript. I, I would think. I would think. I think you'd have a harder time finding freelance work doing that. That's the type of stuff that somebody might do when they already work for a large company. They want to integrate some WebGL in some existing uh, existing product that they have. But you can look around. Just look around. I'm a biotechnologist. And the biological research is dead. Oh, really? Oh, boy, that's not good. I have ample experience in bioinformatics, R, and data analysis stats. How do I get into data science analysis? Well, I assume you got you got the background. Uh, I would look around, see what, what the skill sets are looking for. I think you're going to see a lot of Python demand in that context. But I'm not. Uh, this is this is a specialization that I'm not in there. I'm not into uh, biotech. It's funny, when I was doing a music business related mastermind group, first thing the guy who ran it said was not to smell. I can't grasp how that is even a thing. <laughs> well, clearly you haven't worked with nerds. No, I'm just kidding. Nerds are all clean. Uh, okay, uh, Michael, I'm 17 right now. Great age, by the way, great age. Do you have any recommendations for learning further? I know all my basics. I know C Sharp, Rust, almost. At my age, I can't get any jobs for coding. Best chance for you to get jobs is small businesses. Learn the web stack. 
that's where you're going to get your jobs. Uh, clean Code and Clean Architecture by Uncle Bob. Yeah, I have not read that book, but I like the general principle. Rob Burns says, I like to listen to your YouTube videos while I work. Steps are the best. Hey, I appreciate that, Rob. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, Stefan, do you have any opinions on aiming to work for the FANG? Yeah, I know yeah, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google. Companies to get bigger, to get the bigger 125K up in salaries. YouTubers make it seem easy and, and the way to go. No, you can make that kind of money not working for fangs, by the way. You don't have to work for fangs to make that kind of money. Um, under, under 25 is not much in the tech field with some experience. So, you know, uh, the thing about working, I never worked for a fang. And the, the thing about that is I get the impression that they're going to work you really hard. Uh, so, you know, freelancers can make easily that and much more, you know, and, and, and not have to deal with the fang headaches perhaps hey steph do you think i should choose react native over android as a general well, look to the jobs but as a general principle i like um cross-platform solutions for um uh, i like cross-platform solutions for mobile development as a general rule for a whole bunch of reasons i've gone into before steph do you have wife and kids i have Many plants now. I have many plants now, and I'm getting rid of them too. Um, uh, Steph, how did you get a haircut when quarantine is in effect? I have this nifty clipper. It's shaped like a, a semi uh, half moon, and I just do my own hair. Which reminds me, I got to get them cut. I got to cut it again. Can you do a WordPress course update nowadays? Can you do a WordPress update course? I, I plan on at some point doing like an intro to WordPress course I'm going to put out there, but that will have to be after uh, July uh, for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, are there enough fluttered freelance jobs? I'm searching. I searched Flutter on Upwork and only found 300 proposals. Where can I find more? I don't know. Check around. Check around. I think Flutter is a brand. It's, well, it's, not, it's not what I think it is. Flutter is a brand new technology, and I think that will just increase with time. Refactoring, improving the design, first, second edition. Well, I would probably go with the second edition because, you know, it's just slightly improved. But I, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. Savan, when your coders are initially designing a system, is there a set of tools or design methods that you like to use? Do you use UML? I used to use UML back in the 90s. I don't use it these days. Um, typically now, you know, I'm managing my SAS, so it's based off of that. It's the Studio Web SAS. What I do is um, I map out the, what I do is I map out on paper or an iPad, I map out all my views. Uh, I just literally draw them out with basically, you know, what, where, what I want and where. And then I'll, I'll structure a basic database I typically I typically default to an SQL based database most of the time, and then I will have uh, and again that will be just drawn out table one you know here are the fields etc. Uh, with some of the constraints indicated. Although this is an iterative process, and refine it as you go, of course, and then I will also map out some of the major features, uh, just you know summaries in text format. Uh, major features of the system and uh, some notable things that we might have to include. Um, and part of that is the uh, architectural specification, which I always choose. Um, so, for example, Studio Web 5, I went with uh, Laravel, Vue.js, PHP 7 Plus. Um, yeah, that was the basics of it. Uh, we decided to integrate um, Google Analytics uh, for some of the statistics. We were going to implement our own NoSQL database uh, to track um, user traffic flow within the system. It helps us to analyze uh, how people are interacting with the software. So we just offloaded that uh, to analytics. Uh, so there you go. So that's how I do it personally. I like to always start with the views. Then I go to the database. And then I have my rules sheet, if you will. I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. Uh, 
Hey, Steph, when you say that Python is good for AI research, does that mean that Python can be used to develop fully functional AI? Yes, yes, yes. I think, I think that, and I'm not an AI guy, but I think speaking to my friend who's got a master, who's studying his master's in AI up here in Montreal, and Montreal happens to be, I could be the world's leader in AI research. Google's up here, Facebook's up here, Microsoft's up here. And um, I think Python is key. Like they use other languages, they use C++. So I, from when I was, I was reading an article, this one of these top AI guys, and they were saying that they write the core engine in like C++ or C for speed, but then everything else is done in Python because it's just quick to development, develop in. And that guy was saying that if they did the whole thing in C, it would take 10 times, 20 times as long. His, something like that. That was what he said. Again, I'm not an AI developer, but yeah, there you go. I tend to stick to the mainstream languages and technologies um, because there's just too many advantages business-wise and job-wise and, 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 and just longevity-wise that you have there. In the past, in the 90s, I made the mistake of sometimes going down some rabbit hole where I, f I found a language or a framework or a piece of software that I thought was really, really good. Oh, this is so much better. And sometimes it was. Sometimes it was better than the mainstream uh, in, you know, solution that people would use. Problem was that what I discovered happened to me a few times, so I stopped doing it. A lot of times these niche uh, technologies that have advantage become uh, isolated. Uh, they become, they stop being updated. And then you're stuck... Uh, you're stuck there with a technology that's not supported, not widely used, not updated, and uh, it gets you into all kinds of trouble as a, a developer. I'll tell you a funny story, though. This is, I, in my early career as a freelancer, I did a lot of code, but sometimes I would do design and so on. Uh, I, have a gra I did graphic design. I did a program in that. And anyway, so I was designing a bunch of kids, kids books, story books, laying them all out. And I laid them all out in, um, at the time in something called Corel. And professional desktop publishers did not use Corel, although it was a very capable platform, a uh, piece of software. So I did all the layouts in Corel. Uh, it was a freelance job. And then I brought them to the toy publisher. And uh, so then they would, they would ship all the files to uh, Hong Kong to have them process and have all the books printed out based on the, the files that I laid out. So when I got them to Hong Kong, none of the uh, the developers, not, me, none of the graphic artists there and, 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 and none of the print shops out in Hong Kong could work with these files because they were just some un unusual files that nobody in the industry used. So anyway, after like a few weeks of them trying to figure out how to, uh, how to use these files to output the books, they sent them back to me, and I did the the film production locally, and it was it turned out to be a great thing for me because I made tens of thousands of dollars more because I did I did the job locally as a, as opposed to the job being farmed out to China, but that that was like a huge problem. Like the client was not happy about that in the end because of deadlines. They were forced to. I found a solution in town to print out the films, and I made a lot more money as a result of it, especially back then when I was young. But that's just one example. And so you don't want to find yourself using some weird technology that may, may be better. But if it's very rarely used, you may be stuck up a coder stream with a new paddle. Anyway, all right, so we're 40 minutes in. Man, these, these live broadcasts go by really, really fast. So give me some thumbs up if you like this presentation. Um, and, uh, yeah, leave comments after this is, uh, archived on YouTube. Let me know what you think. And, uh, so I'm always trying to improve the, the presentation to make it better, to make it more entertaining. And so your feedback is, uh, very important to me. I appreciate it. So, okay, I'll answer one last question here. What do you think about Swift right now? If you are a beginner, should you invest in that language? Swift is a, is a very, very good language, by the way. Uh, very good language. I was impressed with it, but it's pretty much just iOS development and I guess Mac OS. So it's Idnishi. Um, if you learn Swift, it's good. You know, just again, let the job market dictate to you what you learn, but it's a good first language to learn. There's no question about that. Uh, Neil says, thanks for the comprehensive answer there. Not a problem, Neil. My pleasure. 
All right, guys, so that's it. I appreciate the thumbs up. I appreciate you stopping by and watching. It's 42 minutes in. I'm trying to get these down to half an hour. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to go for my Sunday after, my, excuse me, my Friday afternoon drive. It's sunny out there, so I've got to enjoy the summer. So, well, the spring. All right, guys, we'll talk soon. We'll end off with uh, my live stream clock. Is this it? Yeah, here it is.